Today, we're at an engagement session with some absolutely beautiful light and a waterfall that I do some handheld long exposures at. Taylor Jackson shooting 67 weddings last year. Taylor Jackson, welcome. So Taylor, you are well known in this community. You're an amazing photographer. Before today's video starts, it is Patreon September. Patreon September is just me over on Patreon making 14 videos that comes to the business side of wedding photography. I will not be uploading my daily videos here on YouTube. Uh, this month I will be over making 14 videos on Patreon all about the business, all about how to attract more clients, to get more inquiries, to book more weddings. Uh, you also get all my presets and everything, even just sign up for the one month. And if you don't like it, head off at the end of the month. And if you do like it, stick around. I hope that you stick around. There's also a podcast there. There's all kinds of stuff. There's like $3,000 and stuff already on Patreon. You get instant access to all the back content. And as always, there's a free money back guarantee. So if you join, you're like, what is this? Uh, I'll just send your money back. But you will not be disappointed. Patreon September. There's a full list of the videos that I'll be creating in the description below. On to today's video. Welcome to today's video. Today I am at an engagement session in Dundas, Ontario that claims to be the waterfall capital of the world, but I don't think they are. I think it's probably Iceland. Maybe they have more waterfalls per capita here, but Iceland for sure has much larger and more waterfalls. And there's probably a place that has more waterfalls in Iceland that I haven't been or haven't even heard of, but uh, I'm not giving them that trophy yet until I see at least 100 waterfalls. Uh, today, you're gonna be on top of my camera. Uh, my, I guess like my gear list is uh, in the back here. I have my Nikon D850 with only my 85 1.4G, uh, which is my favorite lens currently. And I'll be using that unless I have to use this here. And this is a 24 uh, millimeter lens on my Canon RP. Uh, I brought this because if we're near waterfalls, I feel like I gotta have a wide angle lens. You don't always have the luxury of making that telephoto lens a wide angle, even though I'd prefer to do it that way. You don't always have the ability to, so so if I want to get low and I want to get some waterfalls or want to get up high and get everything, I just thought I should have the have the option. I usually bring a 35 on a second body just as a, a full backup camera in case I'm shooting and my shutter dies like halfway through the session. I don't want to have to be like, ah, uh, switch to iPhone um, so that I can just switch to my second camera, which is easy enough. It also, uh, I talked about this a little bit with the video that I did with Manny about being an introverted photographer, that I find that when I'm shooting with one lens, I really get in a nice flow and I can kind of maximize the use of my limited social skills. Uh, when I was switching lenses, if I just brought only a lens and I would be like, oh, like let's try this on 35. And I would have to get like, I don't know, just looking at what I'm doing for a few minutes, I feel like I lost the momentum. So by bringing a second body and just shooting quickly and switching cameras rather than switching lenses, I feel like that does a lot of good things. And you can really, like, even if you don't have a full, like, backup camera that's as good as your main camera, uh, if you're shooting in good conditions, like today we're outside, it's sunny, um, really any camera will do. Like this Canon RP, which is technically, I don't even know what it would be considered, maybe like an advanced amateur camera, um, I like it. I like the files that come off of it. I like using Canon lenses. I specifically like the 35 for the R series. And I don't know, like in, in good light, it's fine. And actually, you know what? I'm like, even in every light, I'm going to say this camera is, is quite acceptable. Um, the Canon R as well, as well as like really anything that you can buy kind of new off the shelf does very good high ISO work now. Uh, unlike when I began this photography process and uh, I couldn't shoot above 800 ISO, so I had to actually get primes to shoot bigger f-stops or smaller in numbers, bigger in physical aperture, um, so that I, I didn't have to push to 1600, because as soon as you get to 1600, you gotta make it black and white on like, um, I don't know, like an Nikon D300 or something like that, or a 300S. All right, that's all for right now. Uh, we are going to go to the shoot now. You're gonna be on my camera, and we're gonna take some photos, and maybe you'll see a waterfall. I don't know. I'm meeting my couple at a street called Little John Street, which is my new favorite street in all of Hamilton, Dundas area. Um, I wish it was L-I-L, John, J-O-N, but it's Little spelled, and then John spelled the normal, I guess, way with an H. I don't know, is that normal? Anyways, let's get to it. Let's make a transition. Watch this. Did that work? No, we're still here. I actually forgot why I uh, started recording that intro, that I wanted to give a shout out to my favorite bag for engagement sessions, which is the Peak Design 5 liter bag. And it's pretty much just kind of like a smaller version of the Messenger. And it is 
black. I like the black the best. Um, it's kind of the most low-key. You can hide it. It's the best travel bag that I've found. Currently, it is configured to hold my D850 and my 85 millimeter lens as well. Some GoPro things kind of over on this side here. Um, as well as like phones and wallets and whatever you want. It's, um, it's very good. So as a travel bag, I think it's the best. As an engagement session bag, also the best. As a wedding day bag, maybe if you have a larger rolly case and you just want like a couple of lenses with you or your second body and one lens or something like that I would say that that is maybe the best thing you can buy it is my favorite peak design product even though it is kind of not a flagship bag or anything it's just one of my favorite things I like it I thought that you should know about that you can you can make your decision whether it would be useful for you or not let's actually go to the shoot now this time Whoopa! <laughs> still here guys uh, take a walk down this uh, bridge and you can hold hands or have an arm around each other or kind of whatever you want to do <laughs> Perfect. And if you guys want to turn around and come back towards me here, you can turn around and come back and, yeah. And you can look at each other, you don't have to be looking at me. Amazing. And maybe just stop right at the end and just like arm around each other, smile, kind of look at me. These are fine for a little bit of a warm up. I don't really love that tree at the end of the path. It's kind of screwing up all the compositions and coming out of their heads. And just like that's great and just really close together basically what you guys are doing over here is So the struggle right now is that there's a huge group of people over by the waterfall So we're kind of waiting for them to leave and we're kind of framing them out by being over here with a little bit of the waterfall in the background Which seems to be working out all right. I like this photo a lot better than the bridge photos And the 85 millimeter lens is kind of compressing the background to make it feel a lot closer and bigger than it is now I'm gonna do some long exposures, some one slash 20th of a second uh, to get a little bit of the waterfall motion. And I'm doing lots of frames and I'm just holding down the shutter so that I'm not bumping the camera or I'm not re-hitting the shutter. And I'm just kind of hoping that one or two of them come out. I know that I'm not gonna get every single one in focus because I'm photographing people, but I think it came out pretty good. It's definitely a little bit better, but I'm gonna use that wider angle lens and get an even better image. This was shot at one slash six of a second handheld with a little bit of image stabilization in the lens. Right about there is good, I think. And then if you want to move this way, just so you're a little bit in the sun, I'll be over here. That looks really good. And I'm going to make you guys just get really nice and close together like you've been doing. I actually take off the lens hood here because I wanted a little bit more flare, but it didn't really happen. Uh, the Nikon glass is so good with handling flare um, that it didn't give me the desired uh, less optimal result technically. All right, and I'm gonna make you do the whole like walk that way a little bit and turn around and come back towards me. Walking with pathways lines usually leads to pretty good images. We have kind of a little bit of a, a road dipping down over the hill there that looks kind of cool. So I figured that that would be the shot. And then, yeah, no problem. We move two feet off the road. And it looks like a completely different location. Awesome. And can I get you guys to flip spots like exactly as you are there, though? And I'm taking lots of frames because yeah. I'm moving slightly with how the light is coming through the trees. So I'm getting lots of different styles of images very quickly just by this subtle, so small adjustments. And if you guys want to do that almost kiss thing where you're like really close. Perfect. <laughs> I love that nice, warm, round, wraparound light. Can light be round? I don't know. And you know what? Can I move you somewhere where there's more kind of direct sun on you, even if you come kind of maybe over this way here? Or up top if you want to hike it. Oh, that looks so good. And this isn't a location that like anyone could ever scout because it's like just a random field. No, this is way better than anything that could have been past that paid parking lot. As you can tell, we had somewhere else in mind to go, but this was a much better solution. So we stopped along the way and dropped my phone. Again, lots of frames as I'm moving with the sun. Uh, just small movements create a significantly different result. So here's an example when the sun is actually completely obstructed by the trees and not hitting my lens. And then this is when I let the light kind of bleed through the trees and actually uh, direct contact with my front element. Amazing. 
That was perfect. And your dress like blew out perfectly at the right time too. All right, that is all for today. Uh, please sign up to Patreon for Patreon September if you're not yet currently a member. Uh, there are 14 videos that are going to help you with your wedding photography business and actually book you more weddings, get you more inquiries, and attract more of your ideal clients. Uh, there is a link in the description below, patreon.com slash Taylor Jackson. Lots coming this way. Sign up for one month and see how it goes, and hopefully you stick around. If not, you get access to all the back content, including all of the presets that you saw here, all of my presets total, and a lot of other videos, content, and a podcast that's almost been going on for a year now. So uh, see you over there.